Are you using the Elastic File System, EFS, to mount a network file system for your EC2 instances, your containers, maybe even Lambda functions or from your on-premises networks? If so, this is for you because I will show you two things that you can use to enhance the security of the data that you're storing on EFS. One technique is enabling TLS for encryption of data in transit. The other one is adding an authentication and authorization layer by using IAM. Let's start from the beginning. If you have been using EFS from the very beginning, like I've been doing, you are probably aware of the mechanism to use security groups to control access to an EFS file system. For this video, I prepared an example. And the example is basically the same that I'm using for our book, Amazon Web Services in Action, third edition. So if you really want to dive into the details, go check out that book. Otherwise, I will just walk you through the code, which is CloudFormation a little bit. Of course, you can use any other tool, Terraform, CDK, or even click through the management console to achieve the same things that I'm discussing here. Okay, so the first thing, so this CloudFormation template uh, contains a bunch of resources that I don't want to go into detail now. I did a complete VPC configuration. Uh, and then the important aspect that I want to discuss now is the EFS file system. Okay, so here we define a very basic uh, EFS file system, but then the important aspect that I want to talk about now are the security groups. So here we have two different security groups. One is for the client. So basically that's the EC2 instance that will later access the file system. And the security group, as you can see here, does not include any rules, no outbound, no inbound rules, which means it doesn't allow anything coming in. It allows everything going out. So that's the default. Okay, the other one is more interesting. So this is the security group used by the mount target of the EFS file system. And here, what you can see is uh, we have an ingress rule in here, which allows um, traffic on port 2049, but only when this is coming from another security group, which is here referencing the security group that we discussed before. So this allows us to define really fine granular way without specifying IP addresses or IP address ranges, who can access this file system. That's only those instances uh, with the EFS client security group attached. And then uh, what you can see here as well in the code is that this security group, the mount target security group, is attached to the mount target. And then above here, this is the EC2 instance that is created here for the example. This references the client security group. So that's how those things come together. Okay, fine. Um, but how to enhance the security of your EFS file system? So first of all, I think uh, what we should uh, consider is encrypting the traffic from the EC2 instance to the EFS file system. And how do you do that? So doing so is quite easy actually, because EFS out of the box supports TLS, encryption of data in transit. The only thing that you have to do is on the EC2 side of things, you need to establish a TLS tunnel. So basically you're tunneling all the traffic to the NFS file share um, over that TLS tunnel. So you might ask, why is it important to encrypt the traffic? Isn't all of that going through my own VPC? Is it not all going through my own network? And yes, that's correct. But still, AWS recommends that you encrypt all the traffic within your VPC. Back to the CloudFormation code. So this is the EC2 instance that gets created with CloudFormation. And this contains a so-called user data script. This is a shell script that gets executed the first time when, when, it, when it launches the EC2 instance. And um, here we are already using the EFS utils. So in case you're not doing so already, there's a package available for Amazon Linux and for many other distributions as well. And you can just install that. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, and then the interesting line here is this one, which basically adds a new line to the uh, FS tab configuration file, which basically includes all the, the, uh, all the 
uh, things that you want to mount um, on the operating system. And I'm adding another entry here, which is basically the file system ID, and I'm mounting that to the home directory, and I'm using EFS as the type for that, which basically says, um, I want to mount uh, this with the help of the EFS utils uh, tool. Okay, so what do I need to do to make sure that this connection from the EC2 instance to the EFS file system gets encrypted with TLS? Pretty simple. All I do is I add another option here, which is called TLS. <laughs> that's basically it. In theory, that's all you have to do to encrypt the data in transit. But you probably want to ensure that really all of the machines that are accessing the file system are really using uh, encryption for data in transit. And that's why next we want to have a look at so the so-called file system policy that allows us to uh, ensure that. A file system policy is a resource-based policy for an EFS file system. Uh, so we will add this to um, the file system uh, resource here. And I've prepared the file system policy and I will talk you through that uh, very quickly. So the file system policy looks similar to a lot of policies, as three bucket policies, for example. And in this example, I have only one statement in here, which is a deny statement. It denies all actions from all principles under a certain condition. And the condition is if the AWS secure transport is false. This basically means someone is trying to access the EFS file system and does not use encryption in transit. And all those requests get now with this policy in place denied. I promised you a second technique to enhance data protection for EFS. And this is adding another layer of authentication and uh, authorization with the help of the Identity and Access Management IAM. So by default, when an EC2 instance mounts an EFS file system, there is no authentication required. Yeah, it's just uh, happening out of the box. The only thing we have in place so far is the security group to control uh, the network traffic. But uh, EFS supports IAM authentication for NFS as well. And how that works is you are defining a so-called resource-based policy, the file system policy. We already discussed that. And you add this to your file system. So that's one part of it. Because as soon as you do, uh, IAM authentication is required to access the file system. It's no longer possible to just mount the file system without any authentication. So how do you make sure <laughs> that when mounting an EFS file system, the authentication part is handled? And luckily, again, this is a functionality of EFS utils. EFS utils handles authentication via IAM roles out of the box. And that's what we are going to do. So let's start with the file system resource. So we already added a file system policy. And by doing so, we also added the requirement to authenticate through IAM when accessing this file system. So the EC2 instance needs to do two things. First of all, we need to tell EFS utils to handle IAM authentication. This is really, really simple. Um, as simple as enabling the TLS encryption, because we can just add another mount option here, uh, which is just IAM. So that's it. So this will cause EFS utils when you mount the EFS file system to make sure to handle the authentication part. The other thing that we need, because now IAM authentication is required, we need a way to authenticate the EC2 instance. And this is usually been done by using an IAM role. So let's add an IAM role to our code here. So this is an IAM role, um, which can be used from an EC2 instance. So we have that in place. Besides that, um, we also need a so-called IAM instance profile. And um, now we have the chance um, to basically add the IAM instance profile to our EC2 instance. Okay, so far so good. Um, but what's missing is <laughs> we need to add um, a policy to the IAM role. 
to basically allow access to our uh, EFS file system. Okay, so let's do this next. So I'm using inland policies here because I'm a big fan of them because it's much easier to maintain. And um, yeah, what do, what, what do we need here? So let's go through that. So we need a policy name for that. Just call it EFS. And then uh, we need to define the policy document. And the, sorry, the policy document is now where we define really um, what's happening in here. So this needs a version, the 2012.10.17. This is just the default. And then uh, we start with the statements. And basically all we need is an allow statement to allow access of the elastic file system. And then we need to define the actions. <laughs> and um, there is a list of actions in the documentation. And I'm just uh, copying that here to avoid making mistakes. Let's go through them. So um, those are all uh, actions to access the elastic file system. It allows the client to mount and the thing it allows the client to write to the file system and it allows the client to access the, the root directory of the file system. And um, then uh, we want to uh, restrict that uh, to, certain, to a certain resource. And uh, to do that, we do, we do need the um, Amazon resource name of the file system and with CloudFormation uh, we're doing that with this command. So with this IAM role in place, the EC2 instance has now, um, is now granted access to be able to mount the file system and to read and write uh, data from it. I've deployed the CloudFormation stack um, already and I'm just quickly copying one of the uh, instance IDs in here and I will just uh, SSH into that machine to see uh, what's going on here. What I want to show you is that basically S tunnel is running here, which is establishing the TLS uh, connection. So let's quickly check that. So yes, here it is. So there's an EFS S tunnel running. Um, this is maintained by EFS utils. It gets restarted automatically, all that stuff. I just wanted to show you that this is here. Besides that, let's check whether the direct the home directory basically uh, was mounted and yes here it is um, so this is maybe a little strange so it mounts a uh, localhost basically <laughs> to the home directory why is that because this basically points to the s tunnel and s tunnel is basically opening a local port which then forwards over a tls connection to the efs mount target so that's why this looks maybe a little strange here. But other than that, yeah, we have um, the home directory mounted on EFS and are able to list our data there. Let me quickly recap um, how to enhance data protection of your EFS file systems. So first of all, turn on TLS. It's really easy by using EFS utils. And make sure that the traffic from your EC2 instance or containers, what have you, to EFS is encrypted. That's the first part. Then by using a file system policy, you can basically enforce that anyone accessing the file system uses an encrypted connection. And as a side effect, <laughs> as soon as you add a file system policy to your file system, this enables the requirement for an IAM authentication and authorization. And to do so, what you need is you need an IAM role and again, EFS utils with the IAM mount option to make sure that EFS utils handles that for you as well. So from what I can say, this is very easy to use and it should be the standard um, when we build up things uh, that include EFS. In case you have any questions, leave a comment below and also subscribe to our channel to get more insights into all things AWS.